This is uh, Newcourt Farm, which is north of Training, south of Ben Coven. Yeah, we grow about 2,700 hectares of crop each year, about 7,000 acres, mostly wheat, but we also have barley and oats. I rotate with uh, lupins and field peas as well to bring up the nitrogen level in the soil and improve the soil health. Uh, out here in uh, the Mount Marshall Shire and in the eastern wheat belt generally there's a very diverse mixture of soil types um, ranging from sands, heavy clays and everything in between. It's uh, quite a challenge to maintain soil health when you've got a whole lot of different situations. This is um, your wadjul soil that's uh, pretty common in the wheat belt. Eastern wheat belt particularly. The topsoil with its dark grey is, is um, almost neutral but as you go further down and get into the yellow soil um, it gets more acid so that's the problem is to get to fix the subsoil it's uh, quite an expensive um, procedure with lots and lots of lime. That's what I'm trying with compost provide a lot of uh, nutrients as well. The OSC um, from Metropolitan Waste, quite economic. Compost is one way that we can go to help conserve moisture. We're going to apply it to this sandy soil here which um, is pretty typical wadjul sand um, for this area and I'm going to try putting it on after the seeding. We've got some litmus barley here, which is acid tolerant. The compost will give it nitrogen and uh, also lots of trace elements. I put some OSC out at two tonnes to the hectare on another paddock before seeding and put oats in there and it's looking really good. So I'm pretty excited about what the compost can do for these kind of soils. perennial grass seems to grow and gets its roots down. It's just starting to shoot now because um, the, the weather's warming up a little bit and it'll start shooting but in the summertime by about um, December, January or end of December it'd be about this high so um, I have been harvesting in here and just been able to harvest the the heads off the um, triticale it was and the, it was green underneath with with perennial grass um, so I was able to put sheep straight in on on green feed after a harvest. Lupins can grow pretty well on it too. I should try and like pull up the whole thing and now you can see the nodules on that one. It's full of uh, rhizobium in there. Yeah. And when uh, as that breaks down in the soil over the summer and during the year next year, it releases the nitrogen that uh, has not been used by the current crop of lupins, which is putting nitrogen into the pot, into the seed. But it, it does produce more nitrogen than it needs, and it's put into the soil for the next um, two crops that we put in cereal, which would be on sandy soils. We put in wheat and then oats. Especially now the oats are in such demand. They grow really well on this sandy soil. I don't think that's going to survive, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put it back. Compost tea making tanks. Vermicast. Black gold, they call it. But um, that's full of um, beneficial microbes and fungi from from the vermicast. Five litres of fish each one. I'd like to um, mechanise this so I have a big tank with a one big cage at the top that I can use a front and loader to tip in a load of vermicast so we don't have to do this. Um, but it gives someone a job. Shoot the yard and lupin 
Take the chaff. It's the processing. It's not me that makes the fertilizer out of the lupin chaff and the um, sheep manure, it's the worms. This year we had possibly over 100% lambing. It's, we, we marked 100% but there's been more since then so that's the first time ever and um, uh, it's possible that the extra trace elements and minerals in the um, compost tea that we're putting out is helping them and also I've been applying humates and granulated compost with my fertilizer for six years now so it's probably starting to build up in the soil so that could be helping as well but yeah the sheep have benefited wool production and lambing and yeah general health but also we've been planting a lot of salt bush and regodia so that helps them during the summer months and during lambing um, extra calcium and trace uh, minerals in their diet currently I've uh, got a trial to uh, test the the effect Rogodia has on intestinal parasites in sheep so that will be an added benefit as well as the nutrition that they provide the sheep during the dry periods that could also reduce the worm burdens so that would be good Legumes are central to soil fertility I think and particularly as fertilisers become more expensive they will become even more important because they provide nitrogen and, and in a form that's environmentally friendly it's not made with fossil fuels or gas or anything like that this will go into wheat next year and uh, year in year out one year wheat one year pasture and the carbon levels in the soil get built up by the by the uh, pasture phase. It's very hardy and survives through dry periods. I think that's because it's got a bit of assistance from the rhizobium in its roots. Peas in particular seem to be very good at improving soil health and I've um, got some great crops on pea stubbles. When we graze the stubble in summer the stubble tends to um, get dislodged by the sheep and end up on the fence so for that reason I'm trying payola which is um, incorporating canola uh, with the field peas and that hopefully will make the harvesting operation easier because the field peas will stay erect by ho and holding on to the canola um, and also when we're grazing them in the summer the canola stubble should hold the pea stubble in place and so that we're getting a pretty good coverage of good uh, pea stubble which is has a fair bit of nitrogen in it as well so it's um, good stuff we want it on the paddock not on the fence line <laughs>